Hello, and welcome to my podcast, Empowered to Thrive. I'm your host, Kareen Powell, and I'm the owner of Change Radically. In this space, we'll talk all things inner wellness, and parenting will certainly come up too. Because I'm a mom to four kids, so parenting is a huge part of my life. This space is designed for safety. Your inner child is welcome. Your past self is invited to listen as well. And no matter what type of day you're having, I want you to know I'm glad to be with you. I live out of vulnerability and transparency. So come and be. Be yourself. Be messy. Invite a friend and please stay a while. Keep coming back. I want you around. Now, let's jump into today's episode. All right. I am so happy to have you here with me today, and I'm also glad because my husband, Evan, is on the show with me today, and we are going to talk about the healing journey and what that means for him. And before we even started, he mentioned, I don't know if I'm a great candidate for this, and he said it was because his process has been organic versus structured. And I felt like that was actually a perfect fit because I want you to hear something that is actually very aligned with the way that I talk about living, intuitive living, living in a way that is not formulated, doesn't always make sense, but sets you up for authentic living and thriving. So when I think about the healing journey, I often wonder, how does someone else hear that? Is it vague? Is it daunting? So for you, Evan, when you even hear that term, healing journey, what does that mean to you? So it sounds like we're going on a trip and um, we're taking a trip toward wholeness, which um, I think does sound pretty daunting. To be whole sounds really big. Um, I mean, like to be complete, to have everything that I need, to be able to face what I need to face. Um, and um, yeah, I think it, it to me it feels pretty overwhelming when I hear healing journey. I, I I know in my process I've I feel like I've gotten distracted or I've gotten stuck in a lot of places. And imagine I may be much further along than I am at times. And I've also come to realize that it never seems to be complete as in, all right, we took that trip and um, it's over now. There's phases and there's seasons and there's parts that get completed and you can like stop and celebrate and maybe rest. But there never really seems to come to a place where the journey more or less ends and um, there's no more need to move anymore forward or upwards or um, in a, in a particular direction as you're uh, maturing maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's why I feel very comfortable talking about my own process as I guide others along theirs because to me, it is what you said. It is a lifelong journey. It's not about arriving. It's not about being this perfect version of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's why I feel no sense of sliminess or shame in saying, hey, I'm on the journey too. I've been on the journey for a while and I will continue to be on it. And we're going along together. Mm-hmm. So you talked about it feeling a bit or very overwhelming and this idea of wholeness, completeness, but how is that possible? So when you move away from that ideal or perfect version, what does it really look like in everyday living to be on the healing journey for you? So um, 
I think part of the reason it feels overwhelming is because it doesn't sound fun. Like if you <laughs> you said, "Hey, let's go," you know, um, take a take a trip together. That could be fun, but wholeness, in my experience, has been difficult. It's taken a lot of work. It's taken an engagement and sacrifice and um, focus. Um, it's you know so. In that in that regard, it's been um, at least when I think about it, it's, it sounds difficult. But um, I I feel like when you move away from the perfection, hey, this needs to work. Um, I need to get somewhere mindset. Then yeah. you you really have to become very comfortable with messy. Um, and and you have to be comfortable with experiencing pain, difficult things. And once you get to that spot, I feel like it becomes very easy. And I don't say that to say that I've gotten to that spot. It's just <laughs> as I become more comfortable with it, it, it becomes easier. Like, oh, all right. Um, I don't, I don't have to arrive. I don't need to succeed. I don't need to create something that people like. I don't need to show up in any particular way. Mm -hmm. Um, I just need to be moving. So as I, as I think about, um, my children as they're growing, like it's a, it's a pretty fun thing. It's a pretty beautiful thing. It's, it's a difficult thing at, at times, but it's not that I need them to be something or become something. They're just growing, they're maturing. So, um, there's a lot to celebrate in that. A lot to celebrate in that like there's obviously yearly celebrations of their birthdays but there's there's monthly celebrations of their achievements and there's yeah I don't know it can be pretty it can be pretty fun but yeah you definitely have to let go of the idea that you're going to arrive somewhere mm -hmm. well even as you were just sharing there I I heard you having to confront a lot of the underlying beliefs, a lot of the condition patterns that you grew up with. This idea mm -hmm. that you're having, letting go of the perfect version or mm -hmm. getting it all right. And you're saying it is going to be messy. That's just how the journey is. And I have to embrace that. I have to celebrate through it, not wait till I've arrived. And you bring up a completely different perspective than I would when you talk about not actually necessarily being super excited about being on the journey, like it's work, um, it's hard work. You, you mentioned some things that feel very different perspective than how it is for me. I actually feel like I light up at the idea of having a session where I'm, I'm, I'm actually being coached, I'm being supported, or mm. diving into the inner world and understanding the deeper workings for myself or for somebody else. Like it, it excites me. And mm. I recognize that that's not the case for everybody. And it's so good that you're bringing in your perspective because I'm confident 100% sure there are people listening who don't feel as lit up about it as I am, mm -hmm. who do feel like it is a bit of drudgery. It is a deliberate choice. And even though, of course, it's even a deliberate choice for myself, it's, it's not one that feels the way you described it. And so having both perspectives is a wonderful thing because we we need to hear that sometimes it is about like doing the difficult thing because we're keeping in perspective what we want mm. and and as i say that what shows up for you when you think about the reason why you've gone back to all right i got sidetracked i'm 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 not as far as I thought I'd be in this process, but I'm going back to it. I'm willing to do the work 
even though a big part of me wishes I could just skip out on the day. Um, what what brings you back to that place? Yeah, so I think if it was easy, I think it would have been done already in a sense. Like maybe everybody would be doing it. Okay. Um, but in my process, um, actually succeeding is very important as far as like my my like you mentioned, my childhood, my background, and my mindset. So um, it's actually difficult for me to start something that I don't think I can succeed at. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if I, if you say to me, Hey, let's go to the store and we never make it to the store, but we did all kinds of fun things in the, on the, along the way, I'm going to feel like we didn't really succeed. Like <laughs> gotcha. we didn't, we didn't go to the store. That's what the whole point. Well, that was a wasted trip, even though we enjoyed ourselves. Right. Um, and I, I know everybody that doesn't have that mindset, but, um, when I when I think about some of the things that I need to overcome to move forward, and I think uh, I think that I can't succeed at, at them, and I have questions in my mind about whether or not I can overcome them, then there's a hesitancy in my mind to even try. At times, um, I had to find a motivation. Is it is it worth the risk of failing to try this because it's that important to you? And I think that's why I'm still in the process and working hard at it because the result is that valuable or that invaluable to me. Like I, I want to be whole, I want to be well, I want to be connected, I want to be free, I want to experience love in a deep, deep way. I want to be able to connect with my emotions, um, scary as overwhelming or overwhelming as they are. Um, I want to live life the best I possibly can. So like when I think about, all right, so this is where I have to go to get to that spot. Then, you know, I have a lot of motivation. Yes. But in my process, when I'm not feeling like I've gotten what I was to set out for, what I set out to get, I can get frustrated. Like, I don't know if this is working. Um, I'm not seeing the results I need. Mm -hmm. Is this mm -hmm. really worth it? You know, so. Yeah. yeah. So when you think about the healing journey, what has it encompassed for you? Like, can, can you give us some tangibles of, well, being on the healing journey has meant that I've focused on this or I put this into practice? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's all revolved around connections. So um, a connection to my heart, a connection to my body, a connection to my emotions, a, a connection to um, the people that I love in my life, um, a connection to friends, and, and deeper connections, like deeper intimacy and all these things. Like, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of my body, but are you really aware of your body? Have you given it more than two seconds today to really ask it like how it's feeling and what it needs and what it wants. Um, so it, yeah. And there's like so many different, um, maybe trails that that's taken, but I feel like they've all re revolved around being connected and being engaged and being intimate. Um, and you know, that could be what I eat or that could be, um, where I show up or and how I show up or um, um, just stopping to evaluate how, how are you feeling buddy like what's what's going on inside you yeah I think that's kind of where that's come from and what that's looked like mm -hmm. and how has all of that affected your relationships especially the, the closest relationships, either the ones that you started out with in childhood or the ones that you have with us in your, in your home. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned before, messy is kind of the norm for what we're talking about here. Like you don't grow without um, a level of chaos, a level of 
a difficulty, a level of pain. Um, so um, it doesn't mean it's always that way and things don't transition, but you have to, you have to expect that um, even if it's just mistakes, <laughs> like I mentioned before. So I feel like relationships have at times been more difficult and then at times been 10 times better, better. So in order for you to know me well, you have to see all of me. And so when you see all of me, there's parts of me that I'm afraid that you might not like. There's things I've done that you, I'm afraid that of you seeing and judging. Um, I have to deal with my shame. Um, so all, all that part looks really messy, right? Um, at least in my mind it does. All right, so um, someone is seeing me with all, without all the coverings that I normally would want to have to make me look pretty beautiful, acceptable, liked, loved. Sure. And then once they see it all, and then you can experience that connection at that level. And in your case, you would be a person who would want that deep connection no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, then we have a new level of intimacy. Like I am known and I am seen and mm -hmm. you know me and you see me. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's there here there comes the authenticity and um, there there's like a spark there too somewhere <laughs> because of the the knowing so mm -hmm. um, and and like I mentioned you as an example but that kind of translates to other relationships when I start uncovering my emotions and they're really. Uh, overwhelming or they're messy they're hurtful they're it could be anger or it could be um, frustration um, sadness definitely experience a lot of sadness and um, um, like th those are the messy parts but when that sadness or that anger whatever it might be is not holding you down you're able to experience the other side of that which could be some pretty great highs. Did I answer your question? Yeah. So say in the, I'm going to presume, even though you didn't necessarily say it, the discomfort of mm -hmm. being real. Mm -hmm. How does that impact some of the formative relationships you have? Because you already know those people pretty well. and you're trying to interact as your authentic self. Mm -hmm. So what is very practically for somebody listening who's on their own healing journey, who mm -hmm. recognizes, you know what, some of the relationships that help to form who I am are ones that I have to figure out what to do with now. How do I interact? And so not to necessarily answer that question for anyone else, but for yourself, what very practically now does that look like? Hmm. Can you ask the question again? Yeah. Think about the family of origin, the people that mm -hmm. you grew up with in the house you grew up mm -hmm. in. Just for one example, when you think about your relationship with those people right now, how does your healing journey impact the way you go about relating. Mm. So I, I think mostly there's a lot of fear uh, there. Because, you know, over time you grow and you change mm -hmm. just, just naturally. Mm -hmm. Everybody does. So here you are um, changing mm -hmm. and these people know, know you in a particular way or a particular yes. setting. Mm -hmm. And then um, you're going to show up differently because you're growing. Mm -hmm. And there's, in my mind, there's a question of, um, so now what are they going to think of me? Or how mm -hmm. are they going to judge me or treat me now sure. that I'm not who they've um, always seen me as or pegged me as or accepted me as? Like, I already knew what I was getting if everything stays the same. But I'm wow. not sure what I'm getting if I show up differently. Right. Um, 
so yeah i feel like that that discomfort for me is mostly fear and um it's actually pretty easy to kind of play the part that i've always played because mm. i because i've known i've known it i'm familiar with it and mm -hmm. i um like i said i, I kind of know what to expect there um but really just authentically and um to kind of push push the limits and um push the expectations uh, my experience has been that i've still received lots of love there mm -hmm. um and that's kind of over time changed my comfortability with it as in oh i am still accepted so i can keep being myself mm -hmm. um and you know that hasn't always been the case but um mm -hmm. when, when that becomes my norm i can keep acting out of love or in love as opposed to acting in out of fear uh, of what would be you know mm -hmm. and having having to pr protect myself from what what might be so at different seasons on your healing journey has what you described look different yeah i like there's no guarantee on somebody's response right like right, right. <laughs> you could show up one way and they'll be like depending on how they are or where they're at right they'll be like you know what you're good i value you i accept you and you could show up another day and they'll be like what is wrong with you like you need to go get some help mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so so um you know obviously people's responses don't doesn't don't have to dictate how you are but a lot of times mm -hmm. they do um and they definitely have for me um but you know as i'm going through my own process i'm like becoming more comfortable with people's quote unquote neg negative or more immature or half-hearted responses and um you know learning learning to be myself no matter what i think practically it's 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 kind of looked a lot like testing the waters to be like hey if i'm a little bit different than you expected are you okay with that yeah and then depending on how that response was that um would, would definitely affect what else i was willing to show yeah or what how else i was willing to be yeah um but you know like that's my that's just my process because that's my own maturity co coming out to not be willing to just um i think take whatever and be who who i am regardless mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I know when I think about it from my own perspective, um, there's also been times the dynamic of relationships I've had had to be drastically different than what I might have hoped. There was times mm -hmm. where I stopped talking with somebody for mm -hmm. a long time. They may not have even realized it, but I knew the difference. I knew that I had been the one to always, or not always, but often initiate, say, in the relationship and having to change the dynamic of that for various reasons. Mm. And I, I guess to your point of it is uncomfortable, messy, it, it doesn't always look and feel what people consider and label beautiful and embracing it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, even in this moment, embracing the conversation where Brielle's in the background making noise to all of this, there is the idea that people have their opinions, people have their stereotypes, what this should look like, what this should be like. If we bring it, if we bring it down to the, the practicals, right? What should a podcast sound like? What should it be like? And mm -hmm. That's not just relating to this. It's relating to all the elements of life. What, how should you treat your family members? How, how should you go about being respectful in relationships that you've had for all of your lifetime? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are going to be asked, and that might be an internal ask, to do something that feels inappropriate, rude, disrespectful, unkind. 
Yeah. And it's necessary to our healing to for us to respond to that. And even in anguish sometimes, even with tears, I wish it didn't have to be this way. I wish my actions weren't going to mean that someone else feels discomfort. And because we're never responsible in this case, in this case that I'm speaking of, we're not responsible for somebody else's discomfort. Mm. You know, there are times where we play a part in the effect that we have on somebody. And there are other times where we simply need to make the decision to say, put up a boundary by as a byproduct, someone else is going to experience perhaps the pain of, of loss, but the boundary was needed for the health of, of our relationship with that person. Hopefully I'm not being too vague where it's, it's where you or someone else can kind of understand in context what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. So what, what would you say, how has the healing journey impacted you on the everyday in your parenting? I know you talked about a focus on connection, more connection with yourself, more connection in your relationship with others. A lot of waking up to what your heart is saying, what sensations and ways your body's communicating with you instead of disconnecting, instead of dissociating, actually integrating back within. And all of that, how does that impact you in typical life? Um, so I, I think my mindset right now is that all of this is a dance um, and every part is interconnected. Um, so what I, what I ate this morning could be affecting my mood right now. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> my mood could be affected by um, what I need to do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and those are not two opposite things, but those are three connected things. Mm -hmm. um, and so here I am relating to all these other individuals that um, I hold some responsibility to give some safe space to, to grow as well, like my, my kids. Um, and, um, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm lear learning to engage them in their dance as well. Like in their, all these connection, connection points that they have mm -hmm. not, not to make it so much a part of mine, but to, like I said, to give them safe space to actually do their parts and mm -hmm make their connections um mm -hmm. and f i mean for me personally i'm always like trying to be tuned into how what i'm doing is affecting how everything else i'm doing um and so i'm actually doing that for them but also teaching them how um how how my process is and how i'm i'm looking at things yeah so like more recently, um, I have a, um, a child who's given me a lot of reaction. And I think in the past, I may have looked at them and said, hey, you need to fix that. Or mm -hmm. um, you have a, why are you reacting to me? Or, you know, so on and yeah. so forth. But mm -hmm. I'm also ob observing, all right, so, um, you know, what was it? I wonder what their school day was like. I wonder what they ate for breakfast. I wonder... Um, if they have a need that's not being met in their life, I wonder if they have a dream that's been, that they've been disconnected from. I wonder how their interrelationships with their friends are. Um, and I wonder how I'm not necessarily showing up and being connected to that need is affecting them. Like what, what's my part to play in even all that, if I know some of the pieces that might be playing in. Um, and I think, if I scale out, it looks big and overwhelming to be that aware of all that. But when you're, mm -hmm. when you're tuned in, like these things are all just, they become normal the more you do them. So, um, 
you know, there, there's so many calculations that our brains are doing all the time. <laughs> you know, you walk into a room and you, you smell paint and you're like, oh, so the room is quickly, you know, painted. You see the walls and like, there's just like, so you see, you smell, you feel, you taste, you touch. And then you, you know, there's all the other subliminal things that are happening as well. So mm -hmm. um, it just all becomes like information. And yep. I feel like in, in the journey, you just learn to process and um, you get feet, you get a lot of feedback. Um, a lot of it's intentional because I'm, I'm often asking you or you're giving me information or I'm asking the kids or they're volunteering information. And um, I don't always feel like I need to judge it all. Like I need to box it all and make sure I know where it goes. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm just being connected to it. So, you know, I don't have to sit there and eat the food and say this is good or bad. But I'm going to sit there, and eat the food and I'm going to say I have a salty taste, I have a sweet taste, I have, I just have sensations that are, are becoming a, alive in all this, and I want to be connected to them. Right. Yeah, I hear you saying you're noticing. Mm -hmm. And I'm also hearing you say, this is what you mean by your healing journey and the organic process. So mm -hmm. this everyday living, and the ways you're looking at it holistically and recognizing mm -hmm. we are interconnected mm -hmm. and mind, body, soul, spirit, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's ways that we are being impacted on, on all these different levels. And something that lights me up is this idea that you are on your own journey, healing, recognizing mm -hmm. some of the subconscious beliefs, the conditioned patterns, the ways that you learn to cope that may not be supporting you now in adulthood. Mm -hmm. And as a byproduct, it's impacting the way that you parent. It's allowing you to model something for our kids that will propel them on their own journey. And if there's one thing that I love, it's the idea that we can heal the intergenerational trauma. And so often it's just this organic byproduct to us doing our own work. There's just so much, so much good there that you said. And I breaks it down so that we can recognize we don't have to go to that place of overwhelm where we say like, oh my goodness, look at this mess. Look at this chaos. Think about a room that, you know, is just chaotic and it's a mess and everything's out of place. And we're not even sure where things go. We actually can recognize that it's just this everyday noticing, becoming aware, mm -hmm. getting curious. Hmm, what tastes, what, what flavors do I notice in this dish? Which will demand a pause. It demands mm -hmm. us deliberately becoming like we're becoming mindful. We're saying, all right, I'm actually going to connect with my body. I'm going to be aware of what my taste buds are experiencing. And that in a micro way is I feel like what the healing journey consists of. And so in, in, it's okay to feel the discomfort of being in that room that's out of control and a mess and the chaos. It's, it's actually necessary to sit with that discomfort, but we can choose to, instead of looking at the full room that feels a mess, 
just turn inward and say, what am I noticing in my body as I sit in this space or surrounded by this mess? And in that, we are doing ourselves a service. We're offering ourselves this gift. And the point isn't, wow, I feel this deeply in my gut. The point isn't that the room be neat and tidy and everything in its place all day, every day. That's actually not possible. It's not, it's not the way to live in family. Living in family means, should mean that we allow for there to be the messes, that things are not always in their place, that we are going through our days. And do we discover ways to purge and manage what we have in in a more organized fashion? Of course. Do we recognize that that brings a sense of subtleness and calm? Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Do we all pitch in and work to clean up the room at times of the week, times of the day? Yes. But is the goal that it always be put together, that toys never be out, that there never be a need to pull the vacuum out, or that at the sight of a mess on the floor, we immediately have to clean it up? Or can we allow it to be that we connect with each other in the middle of that mess? that we engage with each with each other that we play together that we do life with all that surrounding us for everybody listening sit with this imagery and just allow it to speak to you in whatever way you need because i i feel that there's something very impactful there you're sitting there smiling what are you smiling about Oh, I always learn a lot from you. And your passion always gives a different little oomph to it. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, that's the intuitive part coming out. You're talking, and then I see a picture in my mind's eye. And I realize that the picture is speaking to my soul about the concept mm -hmm. that we've been talking about in words, right? <laughs> And I, mm -hmm. and then I feel it in my body. Like this is that organic process that isn't exclusive to me that we can all mm. get to enjoy. And as much as it was an innate part of me, I grew up around people who tried to not only, they, they didn't, they didn't understand it. They didn't give space for it. They didn't know how to cultivate it in me. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I feel like now is a point in my life where I can actually ride the wave of living connected to my intuition in, in a more, in a more conscious way, because I, I recognize that it's meant to benefit me. It's meant to enhance life for me and other people. So, all right. Well, I feel like there's always more that we could talk about. There's, hmm. all, I always enjoy chatting with you, whether it's in just in our house or whether it's being recorded for other people, but, um, but I'm not going to take much more of your time. I just want to wrap up with one last question in this next season that of life that we're going into. What do you feel like it is for you that your energy is going to be focusing on as it relates to your healing journey? Hmm. Uh, I don't know if I'm in between seasons right now, but um, okay. I've been um, I definitely want to discover what it's like to um, to have fun as and like as an adult as i am right now what that looks like mm -hmm. um like i have in my mind right now an idea of just creating a pause in between um activities so whether it's you know we arrive somewhere or we ride back home or we're planning to go somewhere or we go from dinner to bedtime or whatever but 
um, just pausing for five minutes of something fun, what that would look like. Um, Cause I feel like we just, like things get so crossed and inter interwoven and there's like no transition. Um, but then, you know, at this point in my life, I'm wondering because I'm so busy, what that looks like to actually pause and take um, a time for myself where I, I do something very satisfying and fulfilling. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not always in my schedule. Um, it's not always in my purview, even as I'm planning things out. Um, like the next, the next thing I might look forward to is quite a ways down the road, as opposed to a short distance down the road. So, um, I have that. And then I also am kind of focused on what it looks like to clean up messes. I feel like I've created a lot of messes in my world, uh, where I make mistakes and I fall short, I fail, I, um, disrupt, I break a commitment. Um, I don't show up and I know how to say sorry and I know how to, um, move on maybe myself, but I don't always know how to uh, come along somebody else who I have offended or I've broken, mm -hmm. um, and how to help them um, to, to move through what I have created. Mm. So I have energy focus in both of those directions right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks for sharing with us and for letting us into your inner world. Always appreciate that gift. And for everyone listening, if you have been just reflecting on your own journey as you've heard Evan sharing and me sharing, I want to invite you into an eight-week group program that I am hosting. We will be starting up on April 3rd, and we will have weekly group sessions where we will focus on certain topics such as relationship health and how our relationship with ourself impacts our relationship with everyone else. We have to start with ourselves. And if we don't learn when we are young how to take care of our needs and how to connect with ourself and our inner world, we have to learn it. We have to learn it now in adulthood. And we'll also be talking about intuitive living, which in very practical terms, you heard me referencing what that is when I talked about that picture of the living room that was a mess. And we'll, we'll be touching on all of these in ways um, independently and then collectively as a group. We will meet once a week for 75 minutes and have conversation. And if you can't make it to the live group session, then you'll be able to watch the replay. And as a part of that eight week group program, you'll also be able to have a one on one session with me, which is very impactful for everybody that does take me up on that and schedule their one on one session because it's not a requirement. You could just come to the group sessions if, if that's your jam. But when you get to focus on whatever it is that you need with me for those 60 to 90 minutes, it's extremely transformative. Some people experience in one session what they equate to six months of therapy elsewhere. And you'll have to see for yourself what it's like. But I want to invite you in if you have been resonating or just intrigued by what Evan and I have been talking about, this is the healing journey. What you've heard in this last little while is the healing journey. And so this is the types of things that we, we talk about in collective sessions. You will be sitting with a group of others who are on the same path. And I, I love to keep my group small, so we max out at 10. It, once 10 spots are filled, doors will close. And I invite you in. I would love to have you there if you want to be there. So for now, we will sign off, wish you all the best, and remind you that mess is not bad and that who you are 
is beautiful and good. Here we are. We've come to the end of another episode. Sit back and reflect on what you heard. What's the one thing that resonates with you that you can take away and do something with? Let's not just listen. Let's listen and take action. Now, action may look very different for us, but it's doing something with what we hear. I hope that you'll share today's episode with a friend that you think would also enjoy it. And please come back next week. I hope that you have a fabulous week and that you remember when you pillow your head at night, when you're going through your days, that who you are is good. And I'm glad that you're alive.